You've just been elected an officer of a local ASNT section, and you want to reflect your commitment and enthusiasm. This new leadership role can be demanding, but also exceptionally rewarding and fulfilling. You can ensure your term is productive by practicing management strategies that will strengthen your communication and organization efforts. Just what is an ASNT local section? Well, it's a group of individual members from the same geographical region that's chartered by ASNT for a specific purpose. A section is a nonprofit organization run by its elected leaders. It may or may not be incorporated, a decision left to section leaders. A section has its own federal exemption and tax identification number and is required to meet IRS reporting requirements. But a section is also more than just a chartered organization that holds meetings, conducts programs, and submits financial statements. It's a formal group of professionals who meet to undertake the business of the society, promoting the NDT profession and providing services to its membership and NDT community. One of the most important roles you want to achieve for the section is to provide leadership. The intent of this program is to give you useful information as well as guiding you in running a well-structured organization that provides the membership with useful and effective services. Leadership will make and keep the section relevant to the members. In this program, we'll explore the importance of leadership, membership, and teamwork. ASNT exists for its members. It's at the local section level that NDT activities and programs are most visible to the majority of our membership. While it is true that there is no one answer to the question of how to run an effective section, the foundation is dependent upon organization and planning. The monthly meeting programs, the camaraderie, the NDT educational programs, the holiday parties and picnics, the award banquets, the membership drives, and all those activities done by section officers and committee members are ingredients of a formula whose implementation spells service and satisfaction to the members. Each section is unique, but there are common bonds and the key to success is involved membership. The board of directors is quite important to the local section. The board brings together a substantial range of knowledge, experiences, and personalities. This allows the introduction of a considerable number and variety of new programs and service ideas. You have the volunteers, the staff, and the skills to be innovative and flexible in being responsive to all of the members. But what makes it work? Well, it starts with the board meeting. So let's take a look at parts of a typical board meeting and some of the techniques that can help you get the most from your involvement and efforts. The first step is advanced planning. The chairman developed and mailed out copies of the planned agenda to the board members well ahead of the meeting. This allows time for each member to be prepared for the meeting. Another often overlooked factor is the physical location of the board meeting. It should be held in an area that encourages a professional attitude. Good evening and uh, thank you all for coming to this evening's meeting and for being prompt. Um, there's quite a few items we have to cover this evening. Now that we've had a couple of meetings for the year, and um, I want to go over where we are, where we've been going, uh, where we're heading to. And um, I mailed out an agenda that you've all received. Um, I see you all brought your copies, so we can start with this. Um, as you can, you've all observed in the last couple of meetings, we've had a little problem with attendance, uh, getting the meetings really rolling and you know getting things up to par. Um, one of the um, areas, Don, that we've uh, been hearing a little bit about is people not getting their notices on time. Um, do you think that's, that's been a problem? Uh, if, we, if we had problems getting the notices out? You and I spoke about that over the phone several times and one of the things that I found was that we were having a problem in our last meeting pertaining to the confirmation of the speaker. And what happened is that his schedule 
was kind of up in the air as far as if he was going to be able to make the meeting. And I held off the very last moment, and I'm sure that was a factor as far as getting the meeting notices out late. What we should really try to do, Don, is, is try to get those notices out at least, say, 14 days before the meeting, you know, a good two weeks, so that uh, whether holidays come up or whatever, so we have plenty of time for the notices to get out. And even if the, the speaker changes, because, you know, we're going to have those kinds of problems, you know, a guy's going to cancel, something's going to come up at work, you know, we're just going to have to live with that, make an apology at the meeting, but we're just going to have to get the notices out so people have plenty of time to respond. Bob Smith had called me indicating that he had received his meeting notice at work, but didn't get it until the day of the meeting. And I had mentioned to him, well, didn't you have, does National have your home address? And he says, no, they have my work address. And he also mentioned that a lot of times he doesn't get his mail until two or three days later because it's past his hands, the mail room, his secretary and such. And I suggested that he call National and change his mailing address to his home address. And I gave him the number, 1-800-222-ASNT, and it connected him with National. And he did call me back and said that everyone there was very helpful. And he was very pleased at, uh, that perhaps by the time we get our next mailing notice uh, labels, that we'll have the, uh, he'll have his meeting notice at home. Uh, meeting notice notice how the chairman is careful not to dominate the meeting. He does, however, frame the discussion by stating the issues and encouraging everyone to share their views, even if they're different or contrary to his own. I know there's other ways we can go, but we, we went around this when we came up with our first agenda. I think we ought to stick with our initial game plan. Next thing on our agenda was um, for a treasurer report. Uh, Charlie, can uh, you give us an update on our uh, status? Yes. Presently, we have 658 in the account, and there's no outstanding checks at this time, and we're balanced up to date. Okay, very good. Uh, I spoke with Lou earlier, and we talked about a couple different um, items, so I'd like to call on Lou and, and have him discuss with all of us what you know, we've been talking about earlier this week. Lou? Yeah, Brian, the seminar on metrology is set for the 15th of next month. Uh, right now, we have approximately 30 people who have sent in uh, applications. Uh, we're hoping for 50. The discussion uh, is guided by the chairman to stay on the topic. Notice how there's flexibility in the structure of the discussion to cover related agenda items if it fits with the topic being discussed. He limits the time spent discussing the agenda's topics. Some committees even list time allotments for each topic. Ramblers can run away with a meeting. A polite interruption will put the discussion back on track. Even to the point of giving one hour a month, one or two hours a month, you know, we're not asking for a whole lot. Okay, that, that's a point well taken, but we've, we've kind of been going over this a couple of times now. We really need to, to continue along with our agenda here. So um, but, um, money from the uh, educational seminar really should, uh, should help with the account, don't you think, Charles? Yes, it would definitely help. Okay, the next item on the uh, agenda here is uh, Constitution and Bylaws. I got some stuff from National on um, that dealt with Constitution and Bylaws. I was reading it over. And uh, I started to think, you know, our, how, what is the status of our uh, Constitution and bylaws? Uh, Barbara, you've been involved with that. Can you give us a little update on that? Meaningful involvement from the officers and committee members should be encouraged. After all, committees contribute to the efficient operation of an organization by assisting the leadership of the section in the decision-making process by providing needed information. At least review them to see if revisions were necessary. We did find quite a few areas where we thought some revisions were in order. Uh, the revised bylaws were sent to the membership. They had a chance to comment on them. We did get a couple of comments. And uh, later, they were approved by two-thirds majority of the membership. OK, and um, do you think we need uh, then to make any revisions right now to our Constitution and bylaws, or do you think we're, we're pretty well set? Right now, I think the bylaws really reflect what's happening in our organization. And, uh, Mary, do we have uh, any extra of those uh, yearbooks? Yes, we do. We, I would say we have between 20 and 25 yearbooks that are left over. We did mail them out to all members of the section, so we are covered there. We also mailed them out to all the, two copies, to all the advertisers in the yearbook. 
On top of that, we have close to 25 extra copies. Okay, so it should be enough for, for Kim Kimberly, to... Kimberly, yes. It should be enough for Kim to mail out to the extra requests. Uh, okay, if everyone's all set then, uh, Jim did want me to, to uh, forward his regrets to you all that he couldn't make it. The meeting is closed by summarizing major points, calling attention to the next meeting's agenda, and going over assignments that have been made. As long as he stays with that, I think we'll be all set for the year. And um, all right, just to recap a little bit, um, Lou, you're taking care of the seminar. Everything's going there. You'll just mm -hmm. contact to make sure the um, yeah, speaker and stuff will all be there. Yeah, I'll get with Don. Don get the notices. Committee okay. members should receive copies Jim, of meeting uh, minutes got, no uh, later than hotel, two weeks uh, following the session, so they won't be tempted to rehash old business at the next meeting. Okay. Minutes also remind uh, members of their assignments. Here, the, uh, Other reminders, such as follow-up phone Kim. calls or memos, may be needed. Okay. Charlie, you got the money. You won't forget to bring that, I'm sure. Right, that's all set. <laughs> be all set. And Don, uh, to get the... Um, the notice is out on time. We really have to try to, to stick with that. Oh. Okay, and Barb, you're, you're in the clear for this one. <laughs> okay, again, thank you very much for coming, and we'll see you in about two weeks for the meeting. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian. Now, it's time to put plans Hi. into action. Let's review some of the important steps and techniques that you can use. First, advance planning. Plan ahead for your meetings and activities and ensure that directions are clearly understood by all involved. Your membership is a vast resource that should be explored. Each member is unique and can provide insight and suggestions that can only improve the programs and services offered to the membership. Encourage meaningful involvement of your members, committees, and officers. Only through their support and determination will your section continue to grow. Attendance will only improve if the plans that have been made are followed up and implemented. And training, which cannot be underestimated. Orienting new officers when they accept an assignment on behalf of the society. No one is above some training. Regardless of a person's status in the section, he or she will need help getting started in a new role. Leadership experience can be passed on from person to person year after year. The continued communication of members to the officers and officers to committee members will help to create a healthy, strong section. The Section Operation Council, SOC, provides a direct source of aid to the local sections. Through SOC, information can be gathered pertaining to special award programs, such as the President's Award Program, Section Leadership Manuals, Speaker's Directory, Student Division Information, and the Regional Director's Program. ASNT Headquarters wants to answer any and all of your questions. There's a toll-free number available, 1-800-222-ASNT, or in Ohio, 1-800-NDT-OHIO. It's at the local level that the member feels that he or she is truly an ASNT member, with all of the rights and privileges of membership. The success of each section is not dependent upon one person. It's a team effort. That effort the involvement, commitment, and determination of your members will provide the foundation on which ASNT will continue to grow.